Hey, this is Seth with InDemandCareer.com. I show people how to get jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And I also help people live more fulfilling and empowered lives. And in this video, I would like to give you a no BS guide to meditation, which is a way for you to get more power and clarity in your life. And I'm going to do what I always do, which is make this seemingly complex topic that is often misunderstood. I want to make it accessible, easy to understand. Um, and I'm doing this in a very bare bones presentation because meditation, it really isn't frilly or fancy. You don't need to learn any complicated technique. Um, but I want to distinguish a few things that I think make meditation seem just seem like um, something you don't want to do for most people. And also, I think reasons why it's not as effective, because there's a lot of there's a lot of bad meditation information out there. Uh, so let me just um, give you some context. OK, so how can you get more clarity and power through meditation? Now, here's the thing. You you are a human being. You have a body. You do have a mind. And mind is a very hard thing to quantify. It's not like a hand or a tooth or your blood cells. You can't touch it or measure it. So human beings have a hard time with things they can't see. That's just, if you get that about life, it kind of makes things make sense. You know, germs were discovered in the 1800s by Ignaz Semmelweis. He had um, proof of their existence through results because he invented hand washing and you know, had these amazing results in the hospitals uh, in uh, Germany. But because this other scientists and doctors couldn't see these germs, germs, they didn't believe him and they laughed at him. So the mind, because we can't see it, there's still a lot of misconceptions about it. And thankfully, now there's more focus on mental health than before. But it's still kind of in the world of like taboo and superstition and we don't quite, you know, well, this works, that works. We don't, it's not like take penicillin to get rid of an infection kind of a thing. So what is the mind? And you may have studied this, but this is my very simple understanding of it. Mind is the name we give to the mechanism that evolves to protect a human being. It's a series of thoughts that clump together to make beliefs that clump together to make a psychological worldview in a person. And the primary function of the mind is to survive and protect. That is the key thing here. So this creates a problem. And this is why we as humans are so easily fixated on fear, pain, and what could go wrong. This is our natural default state as we get older. And the other problem is the mind is, for in many cases, who you think you are, but not actually who you are. And this, is, this leads to a lot of the, almost all the problems that human beings have. But the, the key thing to remember is that the mind while it has many great functions, is primarily trying to protect you. And that's not always the best thing for people. The problem is, the other problem is, we as people get collapsed, mixed up, and identified with the mind. All these thoughts, all these beliefs, we think we are them, even if we're not aware of that. Um, and this is everybody's problem. You know, one of the things I, what is it? Consider worldview, politics, for example. Someone disagrees with your politics, you feel attacked. And there was a time in my life where I was very political that I remember when I wasn't aware of it, you know, someone would say, you know, I don't, I'm not going to even give you examples. Like, I don't agree with your, you know, they'd say something that didn't agree with what um, my worldview, my politics. And I, you'd feel literally like somebody attacked, feel like someone attacked me. And this is what happens all the time in the world on YouTube, <laughs> on the news. People are attacking each other's belief systems and worldviews. Um, and it occurs to us as people, because the mind is a protective mechanism it feels it actually feels like we're attacking each other um but now i can listen to pretty much whatever anybody says without getting triggered um too much because i've done so much meditation and personal inquiry so but that's very high level just i'm just talking to you and about experiencing more power and clarity so the reason we experience so much stress anxiety insecurity on a moment to moment basis is that we are identified and dominated by an endless series of thoughts and reactions with no way to get away from them. Now, there's, you know, could go on and on about the causes of anxiety, the, you know, psychology, all that stuff. But just on a very simple level, think about the fact that most of us cannot turn off our thoughts. 
you can, most people have no respite, no escape from the onslaught of thinking, thinking, thinking. You go to bed, maybe while you're sleeping, you have some nice dreams, you have a break. <laughs> as soon as you wake up, boom, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. And this is, um, it's an epidemic. <laughs> it's a really terrible experience that nobody really talks about. Um, so meditation is the process of creating a space, a deep space between you and your thoughts so that you can operate freely, happily with more energy and clarity. To say, think about children. When you were a child, you didn't think very much. You didn't, or should I say you didn't have this compulsive, you know, it's less, it develops more and more as we get older. So one of the reasons kids are so happy, my, <clears throat> from my point of view, is not just because they're kids, because they actually don't have the accumulation of these stupid thoughts going on and on as much. They are more present. Um, and as you get older and older, this stuff starts to accumulate, but that's your natural state. So meditation is about creating space inside yourself. It's just about creating even just a, like an inch of space between you and these thoughts. It's like if you were living in a house and someone was playing the drums all the time and you just would, you, you couldn't really think straight, you, you'd anxious all the time because there's this constant noise, but then you find a way to just, you don't have to necessarily move out, but you go into the, the attic or, you know, you go into the basement or you put the drum kit up in the attic and now it's, it's not as loud and you can think clearer. That's the goal of meditation. And, and it, it's, it's very powerful, believe me. So here's a few misconceptions about meditation that I was going to white out, but I forgot. So, um, the first one is that meditation is for new agey people. Now this is changing more and more nowadays, more CEOs, business people, celebrities. Diddy just released a guided meditation. So it's becoming more mainstream, but the new agey people who God love them, you know, I'm, I've been part of that community, but you know, when you see people wearing robes and beads and talking about their chakras and auras and stuff, which, actually do exist but the but the the lifestyle associated with that is not appealing to most people it's not appealing to me when i first got into meditation i was in those circles just because i was so genuinely attracted to the peace and power of meditation but all the people with their looks and their the the images that went with it i just i was like dude i i it's obscuring the actual practice so don't you know, the word meditation is kind of a loaded word. It's not even really, it just, it, it's a way of getting clarity, a way of getting present, you know. Um, it's not for new agey people, it's for everybody. Now, this other misconception is also very big, even especially in the new agey community, which is that meditation is about spacing out or escaping. You see people, oh, you see people, and that is, what you'll be doing, but nobody knows what's actually going on in your head. A lot of people use meditation incorrectly and they think it's about escaping and visualizing. And visualization is a technique, but it's not the point of actual true meditation. The goal is not to escape. The goal is actually to connect to the present moment. And that I think leads me to the third misconception, which is that it's supposed to be easy. Um, especially in a consumer society like ours, where everything is supposed to be super easy and convenient. Um, that is a big misconception. It actually is supposed to be difficult in the same way, guys, that if, if you said to me, you want to put on 20 pounds of muscle, or you want to learn a foreign language, or you want to become a digital marketer, or you want to, you know, any of these goals, you want to make a million dollars, right? You know how it is in the world with get rich quick and all these people's, oh, it's super easy. It takes five minutes. You know, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. And so if I was saying that you could put on 20 pounds of muscle in a day, you'd know it's bullshit. If I said you can make a million dollars tomorrow, it's bullshit. And if I, you know, you see somebody saying, oh, meditation's super easy. I can teach, you can get the benefits in five minutes. You can start on the path, but the process is, is, is challenging. Most people don't enter meditation with that kind of grounded 
awareness. Like, like my students who come into the digital marketing course, they know this is going to be a process. They have to learn a lot. They have to work hard. They're successful. But, um, and I think that's, that's that way for anyone. If you were going to learn to go to the gym and, and work out, you do the same thing. But people come in with kind of misperceptions thinking, oh, I'm just, it's just about, you know, kind of spacing out. It's not. The actual technique is very simple, but it's, it's challenging to confront your mind. And it's very rewarding. But once you understand that it's not supposed to be easy, then you can actually feel okay <laughs> about the fact that when you start doing it, it's not going to be easy. Um, there is a technique called TM, which is fantastic. It's a little bit of a different than what I'm going to be going over. And that is a mantra based technique. And it's much easier in a certain sense, but it is uh, a lot of celebrities do it, but it is, um, it's still not easy. <laughs> this is never just like you could say to somebody going to the gym and working out for an hour is easy. Not to everybody. So anyway, I think that sets you up powerfully when you understand that this is a challenging process and that it should be um, taken slowly. Once you understand it's supposed to be difficult, then you're prepared. Now you're prepared. You're not going to get thrown off the horse. And again, it's like building muscles. Focus on small steps. So now that you have this perspective, you're not expecting to get amazing results within two minutes. But if you, as I say again and again here, if you even spend five minutes a day and you do it consistently, then you will start to see awesome results. Here's a really big pitfall that I ran into when I was younger. I started meditation thinking I have to spend hours meditating. I'm super focused. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to spend two hours a day meditating. And then I ended up giving up. It's better to do five minutes a day consistently of whatever technique you choose, but I'm going to, I'm going to introduce you to one right here. So uh, one more thing to understand, to set you up to win how your mind works. Okay, so pain occurred, this is really simplified, but pain occurred in the present moment for every human being. We're little kids, we're running around. At some point in our lives, we experience psychological, mental, emotional, physical pain that knocks us out and the mind comes in to try to protect us. And as we get older and older, these things build on top of each other. When you sit down to meditate, your mind is gonna be triggered. In fact, the point of meditation really is to trigger you. And in a culture where people don't wanna be triggered, this is why it's so powerful, because if you can actually face your triggers, then you get peace <laughs> rather than running away from them or hiding. Your mind is going to try to pull you out of the present moment again and again. It is a survival mechanism. It does not want you to be present. And it's trying to help you, but it's, it's actually hurting you. Remember, the mind protects So uh, what I said here, I call it a well-meaning hell. Like, again, your mind isn't bad. It's just trying to keep you away from pain. And in the process, creates a lot more pain in the term, you know, people experience anxiety, stress, always moving, always moving. And it really burns out the whole body system. Um, You know, I was like this in my 20s before I discovered I had my first metaphysical experience. And I remember, I can't even fathom, I remember what my life was like. I mean, it was just non-stop suffering and thinking and thinking and thinking until I got into this. So last thing, last point I wanted to make, I was going to do a whole other video on this. Just the word meditation is like the word exercise. If I say, if you say, hey, I exercise, <laughs> that's not very clear. Do you do Krav Maga? Do you do weightlifting? Do you play basketball? There's tons of different exercises. And it really depends on the goal. Meditation, the same thing there. What kind of meditation do you do? There's transcendental meditation, there's Vipassana, there's Buddhist meditations. There's, um, there's so many different types of meditation. But it's important not to get caught up in all that. The goal is just to get awareness of yourself outside of your mind. Awareness. So what I'm going to teach you is the simplest way you can meditate without anything fancy. Okay. So here's what you do. You're actually just going to sit like I'm sitting. There's no ceremony to it. Just close your eyes. Focus on your belly area and just watch your breathing. Don't try to control it. Just notice your breathing and then watch your thoughts. And here's the key. You have to let 
your mind go ape shit. <laughs> okay, this is good. The biggest misconception people have is many people think the point of meditation is to quiet the mind forcibly. And I've heard people say, I tried meditation, but I was thinking too much. Well, that's the point. <laughs> it's, what they said is wrong. You're supposed to experience crazy thoughts. Your mind is going to go nuts trying to pull you out of the present moment, just sitting on your butt breathing. Even me sitting here, um, you know, I'm sweating a little bit because it's super, it's like 90 degrees here in Thailand and the air conditioning isn't that hot. Uh, is, is, um, I need to turn down the air conditioning even more. Um, I'm sitting here. I close my eyes. I start thinking, what's the point of this video? Oh, I should re-record it. It wasn't good enough. You know, uh, you look stupid sitting there. Whatever these thoughts are coming, you're not, you know, you're sitting there breathing and I'm having all these thoughts. I'm feeling nervous. Um, I feel, I'm feeling the emotion of nervousness, but it's not affecting me. So you can see it's not, um, stopping me. Um, those are just normal reactions of the mind. So one thing I often do during this process, I just say the word thinking in my head, just label. Like, so I just sit here and then I start having a thought about, oh, I feel like this pressure on my head or this feels uncomfortable. And then I just think thinking, just thought. Then what will often happen is, um, the Buddhists actually have detailed guides on all the different shit that your mind will pull ranging from regrets. You'll, you'll think of a lot of things you regret from the past and having fantasies about the future, the way things you want things to go or worry about things going. Um, you'll suddenly feel this urge to do things. Um, you might be like, oh my God, I have to clean my room. I have to clean my car. I have to start a blog. I have to feed my fish. I have to go do my taxes. Your mind will just come up with anything to not just sit on your butt still and breathe. It's great. This is what's supposed to be happening. If you're sitting on your butt feeling super uncomfortable, you are doing it right. That is the goal. That is part of the goal. You're on the way to the goal. And here's the secret to meditation. And I'm just going to take a moment here. When I make these videos, I get really pumped up. Sometimes I don't breathe, but I don't, I also don't want to be you know, I'm not one of these new agey guys and that's doing a video where I'm like, welcome to serenity. Although it feels, it feels pretty good to be calm like that. But I like, you know, meditation isn't so you become a zen out person. It's so that you're clear and you can express yourself. So that's fully, which is what I enjoy in life. So again, the power actually comes from allowing and becoming aware of the insanity in your head and not reacting to it. This is so powerful, guys. If you become untriggerable, how much power do you have in your life? It's incredible. Think of how much the word, you know, getting triggered by shit is, puts you at the mercy of everything outside of yourself. That's why I love meditation. You know, I, I still get triggered by things, but so much less than when I was younger. It's not easy. Focus on the breath, watch your mind, and your only goal is to return your focus to the breath again and again. So if you're sitting there, you know, you find yourself spacing out, daydreaming, even falling asleep, that's perfect. The work of meditation is becoming aware of it. It's the moment of awareness. That's the meditation. It's not forcing yourself to like, I should be, I should be peaceful. I should relax. I can't relax. That just leads to more suffering. It's sitting on your butt, physically sitting on your butt. And eventually you can do this while you're out there in the world, if you're aware, but you, you want to allow the mind to do what it does. It's going to go on a daydream. It's going to start thinking about shit that happened, you know, yesterday at the supermarket or why did this happen? Um, and then the moment that you realize, oh shit, I've just been daydreaming about this thing. That's, that's, like, that's like lifting the weight in the gym. That is your bench press. That is your um, building of something. Because the moment that you realize that you were spacing out, you're in awareness. That's it. And then you go back to the breathing you make a choice because also the other thing 
I repeat this a couple of times, is that you're gonna, the mind has a lot of momentum. There's charges to these thoughts. And I can do a whole other video on that. The thoughts have their own momentum and energy, which is why so you know, often, most of the time we can't stop thinking or you have a negative thought and you just keep thinking about more and more negative things. Um, the, the weightlifting in meditation is both being aware of the fact, oh my God, I was just spacing out, and then pulling yourself back to the present because there's going to be a, a momentum and a pull to continue the daydream. You know, I find this myself. M your mind is so slippery. You know, I actually came up with the idea to do this video while I was meditating. <laughs> and it was hilarious because the mind is so smart. It knows like, well, how can we pull Seth out of his action? His desire is just to sit and look at his breath. Well, what if we give him ideas about how to make a video about meditation? Ah, and it, and it worked because I really started writing out and, and categorizing and getting ideas about this video for like five or 10 minutes. And then I was like, wait, f dude, that's not what I'm doing. I'm supposed to meditate. So I had to let go <laughs> and come back. It's so, and now this could be a positive thing. It can be a positive thing. You might get great ideas while you're meditating. And that's great because it, it'll op start to open up your mind. But, but it's, it's also, you know, part of the work is letting go of those ideas, whether they're good. A lot of, a lot of you guys also will experience negative stuff. You'll start worrying about something. And I've done this myself. You start worrying, well, what about this? And then you start thinking, oh my God, I have to get up and go do this thing. And you'll feel like you have to act, you have to get up. And you don't. Like I said in my other video, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to get up. Bring yourself back to the breath. That is the bench press. The more times you do that, the more power you get. Um, so reiterating, I just spent 15 minutes organizing my sock drawer in my head. No problem. Become aware of it. Come back. Hey, I just spent five minutes remembering my fifth grade book report and how I argued with my mom two years ago about this thing. Oh, no problem. Be aware. That's your bench press. Come back to the present. Let go of the thought. Um, I just spent five minutes calling myself nasty names for being a lazy ass and sitting watching my breath instead of being productive. And this is, I don't really get into this guys, but our minds are so fucking nasty. You may find yourself thinking hideous thoughts about yourself, self-judgment, self-hatred, all sorts of things. And it will, your mind is just going to be like desperately trying to pull you away from being present. And that's when you really need to be strong. That's what people encounter when they say it's too difficult. And that's when you really need to just come back come back to the present. Remember, when you breathing like I'm doing, I'm not really trying to take a, a big breath, although it's happening like that. I'm really just trying to move my attention from even from the webcam and the computer down to my own insides and become aware of you know, my body sitting on the chair, all the stuff that's actually here in reality, not the stuff that's off of my head. So one more note on this, the beauty and the power of awareness. So what the fuck is awareness? It's not really widely understood because as a species, we're really not very aware. <laughs> we're not conscious. Um, it's when you get something, it becomes real and clear. It's very hard to quantify. I feel to me, it's like waking out of a dream. It's like when you're Oh, you kind of snap out of it. And that's what happens in meditation. You're in the daydream. You're so in the daydream. You're, you're there. That's where your attention is. You're thinking about that thing that happened a week ago or that argument or that thing you're worried about, or should I have done this? Should I have done that? You're in it. You are totally focused on it. And then that moment where you're like, wait a minute, that's, that's not real. I'm sitting here. That's what's real. That is awareness. All these, and the real, the real beauty of awareness is when you see these crazy thoughts, all these different thoughts going all over the place. They're not me. I'm not, I'm not this stream of craziness that's going here and there. That's when you start to feel peace because it is the worst feeling. Now that I'm, I'm like, started this when I was 20 and I wasn't mature enough to really get it at that time personally. You may be, but the real happiness <laughs> and peace comes from when you're like, I think not moving, you know, the, 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 how to me, what's really painful now is that constant movement of thought. Like, you know, that's why certain people, I can't really get too engaged in conversation when 
the, the conversation is just jumping around so much or the thoughts are jumping around. And after a while, this is very exhausting. And this is why everyone's so stressed out and tired is because we're identified with these thoughts jumping all over the place. You know, um, Eckhart Tolle talks about this in The Power of Now, which I'll repeat. If I'm watching, the, the real, the, the, the moments become when you say, if I'm watching these thoughts, then who is watching the thoughts? And am I these thoughts? Most of the time we're so identified with them, that's why we're bouncing around so much. And when you start to get a sense of this space between yourself and the thoughts, that's when you start to feel really good. I think I repeat it here. Yeah, collapsed with thought. The Power of Now is a really good book. And just notice, again, how prevalent this inner monologue is. It doesn't shut up ever. It has comments and judgments about everything, including yourself. This is the human experience, the human condition. Um, and just become aware, you'll become aware of how you experience life like you are this onslaught of thoughts. You can't stop them. It's like they are you. You can't breathe. You can't stop. Sometimes you can't even sleep. Someone says something upsetting, you react, you can't stop thinking. And you know, you go to sleep, you wake up and it's there. I'm repeating myself because it's, it's, that's what awareness is, is when you actually become conscious. Ah, this is what's happening. I'm not these thoughts. But it's something you have to repeat over and over. So the more you practice becoming aware of the thoughts as separate from you, um on that part of you yeah i think i wrote that in a confusing way but basically the more you realize that you are he or she that is observing the thoughts not the thoughts themselves that's when you start to get clarity um and again this is a lifelong process <laughs> it's not a five minute fix if you spend five to ten minutes a day doing this reflecting on it becoming aware of it Read The Power of Now. You can watch this video again. Um, you're going to feel calmer, clearer, more power over your own emotions and reactions. That is where life becomes really good. Um, I know for me, I'm thinking about over the last many years where I did self-development, I'm thinking about what it was like when I was just triggered <laughs> all the time. It wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. When you have uh, this space inside of you, you just feel clearer. <laughs> and the things people say to you that might have upset you before they may just may not upset you as much. And that's part of the benefits of doing this. So, yeah, I hope this has been helpful, guys. Just to reiterate the actual, the, the process of this is really sitting on your ass for a period of time, set period of time. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And just accepting whatever the hell comes up, but not letting your mind first of all, physically take you off, this, off the sitting, <laughs> which will happen. I've had that happen where I'm sitting there and so, suddenly I, have, I feel like I have to do this thing. And I'm, dude, I don't have to do this thing. You know, I don't have to jump up and work on this thing on the computer. I could wait. I, I can't, I can't wait 10 minutes to do that. What craziness in my mind created this emergency sense of urgency that had me rush off and do that. That's, that's the thing to become aware of and just keep bringing your attention back to your, like your navel, your belly button, your, your breathing. Um, the goal is the sitting and bringing the attention back. That's it. It's like train. It's really like training for a triathlon it takes time, but the first time you do it for like five minutes is, is very, very powerful. So anyway, guys, I hope, hmm. see, I just had a thought. I thought of like, oh, I hope this works. I hope people get some benefit. <laughs> I should have said, um, <laughs> actually, I'm not having too many thoughts right now about it. Um, hmm. I feel pretty, 
pretty relaxed. So I hope some of that communicates to you guys. I hope this is helpful. Please feel free to leave comments, questions below, and I'll see you in the next video.